Hello photographers! I regularly get questions from you asking about the best settings for taking sports photos. Now there's a lot that goes into this so I'm going to break this up into a few videos and in this video we're going to talk about how to choose the best ISO, aperture, and shutter speed for sports photography. Now in sports and action photography the most critical setting is your shutter speed because if you don't use a fast enough shutter speed you will not get a sharp photo. When it comes to sports the shutter speed you'll need will vary depending on what kind of action you're photographing. Generally speaking, you'll want a shutter speed of around 1 500th of a second in order to freeze the action, but in some cases it will need to be faster, and in other cases you'll be okay if it's slower. For instance, if you're photographing kids playing baseball, you might be able to get away with a shutter speed of 1 250th of a second, but if you're photographing NBA basketball, you will need a shutter speed of around 1 2000th of a second to get a sharp shot. And since every situation is different, you never really know for sure what shutter speed you you're going to need. This is why I've developed a process that you can use to get the right settings every single time. Now if you want this process to be successful, one of the most important things you will need to do is get to the event early so that you can test your settings and get everything dialed in before the important action starts. Here's how it works, and this is based on my I am shooting method. First, you set your ISO and you set it as high as you think you will need depending on the lighting and the action you are shooting. For example, on a bright sunny day while photographing football, you might set your ISO to 200 or 400. If you were shooting an indoor basketball game, that's going to be very dim lighting, so you'd probably want to set your ISO as high as you are comfortable for your camera. For example, at a basketball game, I would set the ISO on my camera, the Olympus OMD EM5 Mark II, to ISO 6400. After ISO, you set your aperture, and you'll want to start with the largest aperture available on your lens. That will be the lowest aperture number. On this lens that's f2.8 but your smallest number will vary depending on the lens you're using. It could be f1.8, f2.8, f3.5, or f5.6. Once you have the ISO and the aperture set, it's time for the shutter speed. And what you want to do is point the camera at the action that is happening, the stuff you're going to photograph, and set your shutter speed so that the exposure indicator reads zero. Once you've done that, you're actually going to take a test photo of the action, and then you want to review that photo on your camera to make sure that the subject is sharp. And when you do this, you want to zoom in on the image to make sure, because you could look at this thing zoomed out and you might think it's sharp, but then you'll get home to your computer to edit and you'll find out that all of the photos are blurry because you didn't check close enough. Now if the photo is not sharp, then you need to make a settings adjustment. To make your adjustment, first choose a faster shutter speed, and a one-stop shutter speed adjustment is a good place to start. For instance, if you were at 1 500th of a second and it wasn't fast enough, then set your shutter speed to 1 1,000th 1, of a second. When you do this, you will need to adjust your ISO to bring your exposure indicator back to zero. If you don't do that, your image will be underexposed. Once you've done that, take another test shot and check it again for sharpness. If it is not sharp, repeat that adjustment process until you get a sharp photo. Now once you've got a sharp photo, you're going to want to check your exposure. So look at your last test shot and make sure you're happy with the exposure. If you are, you are almost ready to shoot. If it's too dark, you'll want to increase your ISO, and if it's too bright, you'll want to decrease your ISO. Now how much you do this is up to you. You might want to adjust it a full stop, up or down, or you might want to just go a little bit to like plus or minus one third or plus or minus two thirds. Regardless, after making your ISO adjustment, take another test shot to check your exposure. And if you're happy with it, then you are actually good to go. And if not, you need to repeat that process until you are. And that's it. Now, I know this sounds pretty overwhelming, so to help you out, I've actually created a free sports photography guide that you can download, and it will walk you through this process step by step. Now, even with the guide, it's going to be important that you practice this technique before you use it at critical games where you've got to get the shot. Because the first few times you try this, you're going to be slow and you are going to miss your shots. And if you don't practice this first and you just try to go in and use it, you will miss your shots and then you're going to get angry because it won't work for you. Once you're comfortable with it, then start using it for your important work. Now, the last thing I want to mention today is the potential limitations of your actual camera gear. Because this process I just detailed will work, but whether or not it works for you depends entirely on the situation you're shooting in and the camera and lenses that you're using. 
For example, let's say you have a camera like the D3200 with a 55 to 300 millimeter lens, and you're trying to shoot a basketball game. Now the D3200 has a maximum native ISO of 6400, and the 55 to 300 millimeter lens has a maximum aperture of f5.6 when zoomed to 300 millimeters. It's not only possible, but likely that with your ISO at 6400 and your aperture at f5.6, you will not be able to get sharp photos. And when that happens, it's not because the process has failed you, but because you've reached the physical limitations of your gear. This is why in one of the later videos in this series, I'm going to talk specifically about the best gear options for shooting sports and action photos. Now in the next video, I'm going to go over other camera settings that you will want to adjust to make sure that you are ready, fully ready to shoot sports and action with your camera. Now, if you have any questions about this, sports photography, or photography in general, let me know down in the comments. And then do me a favor, would you like this video and subscribe to my channel and download the free guide too, and then get out there and take some damn photos. I will see you guys uh, Tuesday. Generally speaking, you'll want a shutter speed of around 100 and... Ugh, that's bad. <laughs>